good evening welcome back to the channel finally after a month more than a month even i'm back out under the stars uh, and it feels good i have to say i'm uh, with martijn uh, we are facing west here over the dutch coast we have lots of uh, lots of plans for tonight but i'm not sure everything is going to work out but let's start with a comet so um, let's set this stuff up So of course we are talking about Comet Ponsbrooks 12-P slash thingy. <laughs> it should be right in the neighborhood of Andromeda. Uh, Martijn has brought his new lens uh, 7200 uh, Tamron, so uh, I think he might try it at 200 millimeters on the Star Adventurer. Uh, I brought my 135 millimeters, so uh, let's just see how that comes out. And after that, if the skies remain clear, as always, or not as always, but as we hope always, then we have some other plans. Maybe the zodiacal light, and we're also hoping to shoot the winter panorama Milky Way arch. So, uh, see how it goes. While there's uh, people doing serious sports here, we're focusing on astrophotography sports. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Comet Pons Brooks is about uh, just below Andromeda somewhere. I now put my 135 millimeter on. Uh, Martijn already has it in the frame. He's uh, adjusting his frame, having some difficulty with it. Yeah, it's first time doing a little bit of deep sky for me. So kind of practicing where to Yeah. But it's in frame, but not where I want it to be. So. Uh, still, he already has it. He is further than me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's just point the camera uh, more or less where it should be. And then it's just uh, a bit of luck if you have it in the frame and uh, start shooting. Maybe I'll do some dark frames to um, cancel some extra uh, noise. But, yeah, this is just a little fun shot to begin the evening with. <laughs> so good to be out again. Soup clear. Beautiful location, looking out over the sea. Awesome. All right, so um, after a bit of a chaotic start, Martijn's uh, uh, tracker was not tracking, but that was eventually because it wasn't set to north or south. Which is pretty funny, but not at the time <laughs> when it wasn't working. Uh, I'm shooting with the 135 millimeters, and the Comet is now positioned uh, beautifully so that it fits Andromeda as well as the Comet. It's really at the edges of the frame, but I think I like it. So yeah, I'm doing about ISO 3200, only 20 second shots, um, f2.8, and yeah, that looks pretty good on the histogram. Uh, it's relatively sharp. I am a bit worried how I'm going to stack this comet because I have not had much success there, but I hey, will see. We're just having fun out here. It looks like it is getting even more clear. So uh, yeah, I see that Orion also is uh, coming into a really good position uh, for a composition I had in mind. So let's um, shoot some more data and after that we're going to shoot Orion I think. But before I'm going to shoot Orion, I really want to try to photograph the zodiacal light. I have never been able to photograph it before uh, because it was not dark enough and you need really dark skies. But at the beginning of spring where we are now, or almost spring, uh, the zodiacal light should be visible uh, to the west here over sea, which is pretty dark here in the Netherlands. So I'm going to try, uh, just about up there you can see Orion and we have a path leading to the beach and to the right right under Jupiter. I think the zodiacal light, if it shows up, should be there. So I think I will make a small panorama and see what happens. <laughs> oh, and uh, if you're wondering what the zodiacal light is, I'll explain it now. 
The zodiacal light can be seen as a cone of light in the night sky. The sun is reflecting particles of a dust cloud in our solar system. It is thought that it originates from passing comets. The zodiacal light follows the ecliptic, which is also the path the sun and planets are in. It is best visible around the equinoxes, just after sunset or before dawn, when the ecliptic makes its largest angle with the horizon. Right, so uh, I am now shooting hopefully the zodiacal light. I've just put it on 40 millimeters, just a normal stack, uh, because I'm a bit lazy tonight. It's been a month ago and I just want to enjoy the stars, which I'm doing. Uh, I think I'm at the ISO 3200, 20 seconds, 40 millimeters, and yeah, that looks about right. I don't see the zodiacal light already, but yeah, maybe we can stretch it out a bit on my Sony, uh, which I'm filming with now. I, th I thought I saw something, but we'll see. What are you shooting at the moment? Uh, I'm shooting the Comet right now. Okay. Uh, Comet uh, Pons Brooks. Yep. Uh, I cool. shot it at 120 millimeter with Andromeda. Yep. And now I'm shooting it at 200 millimeter. 200 millimeter. Does, yeah. it, does it look better at 200? Uh, the Comet is a little bit bigger. You, you see the tail a little bit better. Nice. So, uh, and uh, afterwards I will uh, turn around my uh, camera to shoot, uh, I think, the Orion Nebula at 200 millimeter. So. I can imagine because that's a really good target for a 200 yeah. millimeter. Yeah, <laughs> and, and there is some, well, there are some, some low clouds. And yeah. I bought a new lens yesterday, so, well, why do not do a little bit of deep sky, right? Just want to try it out, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah, okay, well, we're having a good night still, so uh, I think we've been shooting for about an hour, so let's see how uh, the rest of the night continues. About half an hour later now, Martijn is uh, still shooting Orion uh, and the Horset Nebula on 200 millimeters. Looks pretty cool. I am still on the path. Um, Orion is now coming into a position uh, to, for a composition I've wanted to shoot for about a year now. It's super simple. It's just a path leading into the beach, uh, into the pole village, which we hopefully will go to later this evening for the winter arch. But uh, I wanted to, to try a, um, a same tripod position and a tracked and stacked shot. So so I've uh, put my uh, tripod here, it's polar aligned again. I'll first uh, do a uh, track of the sky and uh, after that we'll just uh, maybe point my camera a little bit down and uh, shoot the foreground and uh, easy does it. So uh, I've shot Orion, Martijn uh, behind me just gave a tour of the night sky uh, to some uh, local people here. Uh, he is a very enthusiastic guide. Uh, there is rolling some cloud in now, but yeah, we are still going to attempt to shoot the Milky Way Winter Arch. So uh, yeah, it's now uh, overseas. I think the apex of the arch is about 45 degrees. So uh, that's excellent. Um, yeah, uh, let's see if uh, we can shoot through that cloud. And otherwise, uh, at least we have tried. Okay, so we have now come up to the beach. Uh, there, uh, to your left, to my right, you uh, in the background, you can see the Pole Village. I've shot here uh, before with uh, Tom Vogels, T-Bird, and uh, I am, I'm planning to um, put that Pole Village in the middle, under the apex of the Winter Arch. Um, my tracker is, uh, I'm going to set it up here so that I can make a logical sky uh, and foreground blend. Martijn is uh, set up uh, 50 meters behind me. Um, I'm thinking to do maybe only uh, single tracked exposures uh, because it's getting a bit late and we're also getting a lot of haze. Actually filming is also getting pretty difficult because my lens is fogging up constantly. I only have one dew heater which I'm definitely going to put on my uh, photo camera. So uh, I've learned something. I need two dew heaters so that I can also make some decent vlogs in humid conditions. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay, so a quick run through on this setup. Uh, what I'm going to do, I um, am uh, going to track my exposures. I've put two ball heads here on top of each other. Uh, the first ball head has a bubble level, so I can know um, when my uh, tripod on top of that will be level. And the tracker will move ever so slightly 
I want to show you <laughs> like this and after that I can just rip, select the ball head below until it is level again and then rotate this ball head in front a couple of degrees with at least 50% overlap per frame. So uh, I'm now going to check um, at how many millimeters I'm going to shoot. I think 20 millimeters should be sufficient uh, to get uh, enough space around the subject because if you're going to blend the panorama, always shoot wider and more than you think you need because you have to crop off some uh, stuff all of the time. Um, yeah, so uh, let's get going. Um, Otherwise, I will be uh, still busy when my time will be ready, so uh, <laughs> let's go. We are now standing in the Pole Village. Um, if you uh, are a long time viewer of this channel, uh, you know I've been here before. I've also told the story before. But uh, basically these poles represent the house of the old, uh, the house, the houses of the old village of Petten, which was once lost to the sea. Um, I really wanted to shoot this foreground uh, there to your left, my, my right, always have to think about it, uh, are some higher poles and they represent the church, I think. And I uh, have taken a position a little bit back there uh, so that those highest poles uh, come right under the apex of the Milky Way. So, uh, yeah, I'll just do, a, uh, I think, a horizontal um, panorama of, I think I need six, seven uh, panels maybe. And... Um, yeah, it's uh, true to life. Uh, the Milky Way is right behind me. It is still really clear. It really surprises me. It's better than expected. And wow, I know I have say, said it a lot, but these nights are the best. <laughs> they really are. Okay, let's get going. <laughs> So, I think I won. I was the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> Still, it doesn't matter at all, of course. Martijn uh, had to finish his uh, foreground here, so I had some time to enjoy the night sky. How did it go? Yeah, it went very well until I started the panorama. But, <laughs> well, that was my first time doing a panorama, so it was yeah. a little bit figuring out how to use the two ball heads. And, yeah, uh, I can imagine. And do uh, a single track. Uh, panorama so uh, but it yeah. worked out so awesome uh, yeah, it looked pretty good on the, on the back of the screen um, I think composition wise here we shot more or less the same but uh, yeah this thing just works very well uh, with the Milky Way arch it's hard to uh, take your eyes off it <laughs> <laughs> to be honest it's clearly visible right now it's yeah, really, really yeah, clear yeah. right now it is man so dark i mean you can really see the winter arch arch the winter milky way arching with your your own eyes i mean we are not used to that in the netherlands <laughs> anyway um yeah we've done various things um if the shots turn out to be any good as always here are the shots and uh again yeah thank you for watching and i hope i'll see you on the next one hopefully sooner than the previous one <laughs> bye bye, bye, -bye. So let's take a look at the results. This is the Comet Ponsbrooks together with the Andromeda Galaxy. I've made 59 shots, ISO 3200, uh, 20 seconds, f2.8 at 135 millimeters. I think it turned out pretty well, although I didn't take any calibration frames. So I think certainly dark frames would have helped, but still glad I took the opportunity to shoot this. And here you can see Martijn's take on Comet Ponsbrooks, also shot it uh, with the Andromeda Galaxy in the frame. And a couple of days later he went back to the same area to shoot a foreground with him standing on a dike. I think uh, yeah, this deepscape image works really well. And was I able to shoot the elusive zodiacal light? Well, this is a, a raw frame shot at 14mm f2.8 ISO 4000. 
And uh, yeah, you can see Jupiter here. The zodiacal light should be around here. Here's Orion, uh, the path leading uh, onto the beach. Um, I am not totally sure I see some zodiacal light to be honest. Uh, if I do some color balancing it looks like this. Maybe a really faint glow but there's also some, uh, yeah, some clouds there so mm, tricky to see. Uh, if I process it further it uh, comes out like this. Um, yeah, with a bit of imagination you can see some zodiacal light here but it's still not yeah, it's still very faint. Uh, interesting though, what I thought, uh, what would happen if I did a background extraction for, uh, in PixInsight? Well, if you stretch that file, um, you see that there is certainly some zodiacal light and also some really strong vignetting going on. But what if I blended this back uh, in my uh, original file? Well then I certainly think I shot some zodiacal light. I think it's a bit over processed maybe, so I should come back someday, but still I'm really happy I was able to capture this. While I was shooting the zodiacal light, Martijn was testing out his new Tamron 7200 lens. He aimed it at Orion and he came up with this uh, yeah, beautiful result. You can see uh, the horse head nebula here, the running man and the great Orion nebula all in one frame. It's all super sharp and yeah, especially uh, for a first time deep sky photo, I think he should be and I think he is really happy with his result. Before we went to the beach, uh, I made this uh, shot from Orion, probably my last for the season. Um, the sky uh, consists of 16 times uh, 76 seconds on f4, 18 millimeters, and ISO 1600 on a star tracker. I left my um, tripod and tracker on the same position and aimed my camera down and blended it with the foreground exposure. Pretty nice result, I think. Now on to the largest project from the evening. I have uh, shot the uh, Winter Milky Way Panorama Arch. Uh, let's take a look at the raw exposures. These were just color balanced, uh, nothing else done yet. Uh, yeah, you can see uh, the Milky Way arching pretty nicely over the sea. There's also some green in the air, that's some air glow. And uh, these are the foreground exposures. And look at that, there is some red glow in the sky. Here's also some red glow, but these are obviously from the windmills. But this red glow in the north, this was actually Aurora Borealis. So that was a really nice surprise. So imagine from one evening, of in one evening, I've shot the zodiacal light, Aurora, uh, air glow, uh, the Milky Way, uh, a comet, a galaxy <laughs> and also Orion. So I'd call this a really successful night of astrophotography. Mm -hmm. 